Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Zerikon and I am back once again. Last week, a site called The Digital Bits released a leak that Best Buy was going to see selling physical media both online and in stores in the first quarter of 2024. The full specifics weren't mentioned, but this would include DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K Ultra HD discs, as well as Best Buy exclusive steelbooks. The next day, Best Buy confirmed that the company is going to stop selling DVDs and Blu-rays, citing, To state the obvious, the way we watch movies and TV shows is much different today than it was decades ago. Best Buy also confirmed that video games will still be sold, which is something that I was curious about as well, and I'm glad that that will still be sold. One more thing I want to know was if CDs were still going to be sold or not. When I first read the Variety article, I thought I saw that they were also on the chopping block, but coming back to it and reading it fully, I'm not seeing it in any references at all, so I'm not certain. Best Buy hasn't been selling any of the CDs that I've been interested in, or would be interested in, but I still wanted to know the future of that medium. Back to DVDs and Blu-rays though, I think it's a real shame that this decision is happening. I acknowledge that yes, as a whole, we are shifting toward digital content, specifically content that is streamed. Heck, you're watching streamed content right now. However, I think that the act of having content that can be bought and sold in a physical format needs to be preserved. Consumers have become so complacent in watching shows and films via streaming that they have several different subscription services just to watch everything they want. My close family members have at least four, maybe five. Another family member mentioned having three services just to watch all the sports games. I'm not saying that these services are inherently bad, but consider how they've become possibly just as bad, if not more so, as having a cable service once you factor how many subscriptions you might be using. That's one of the reasons why I advocate for buying your own media. Sure, you might be paying more up front, but over the long run, it's a good investment. Additionally, with these services, content can be removed or cut at any given time. Shows have been pulled from services before. The Office and Marvel films were pulled off of Netflix when Disney and Paramount were going to create their own streaming services. Granted, this doesn't completely apply to streaming. Apple purchased the broadcast rights for the Charlie Brown specials and only made them viewable on Apple+. Plus. It was only due to backlash that Apple also aired the specials on PBS last year. Additionally, last year I was watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I noticed several times that they trimmed scenes down. And it's not even like a single shot that would have been seamless to someone who didn't know something was off. These happened in the middle of shots and would be noticeable to nearly anyone. They trimmed a roughly 20 minute Christmas special so more commercials could fit in. I've been buying more DVDs over the years so I could watch content whenever I wanted without having to worry about something being removed or cut out. And since I've now bought a Blu-ray player, I've started to collect some of that media as well. Now, you might say, well I can always just buy digital versions of what I want to watch, it's the same thing. Well, that's not entirely true. You still might lose access to that content as one woman experienced several years ago. The only way you can have complete access to your digital content is if you have full ownership over it as a digital file that can be viewed offline at any time with no restrictions, whether that file is in MP4, MKV, or some other format. That's the only way digital content is actually yours and not some license, which I think is stupid for the record. If you would want to view your content anywhere within your house, you can still do that with a NAS. A friend of mine made his own Plex server, which didn't catch my curiosity until way later. I'm not going to use a Plex to do what he did, but I'm still going to make a server for hosting films and shows that I can watch at any time, as if I were using Netflix or the like. And even if you don't want to do something like that, which is completely fine, I implore you to at least consider what a streaming-only landscape looks like, where you would have no say over what shows you can watch or what films you can watch, and you'll need half a dozen subscriptions to watch the content you want. Netflix was the only subscription service that I had, and due to the increasing prices, removed content, and the cuties ordeal, I didn't use it anymore. This helped me see why it was better to take control into my own hands. But that will do it for today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, I appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. So until next time everyone, I am Zerikhan signing off, have a good one.